Hey guys, Zero here. Welcome back to Let's Play RuneScape. We are back in the live game today. I'm just over at my port. And uh, as you guys know, I've really been enjoying the uh, RuneScape beta for RS3. It's really cool to actually see um, such a big change at such an early stage in development. You know, one of the interesting things about RuneScape is that they have progressed, right, over the decade plus that they've been running this game. And um, it's really neat to see how that change occurs, right? But up till now, for me at least, I haven't been able to be involved with a beta um, early on. So, you know, what would happen is just one day there would be an update and then all of a sudden the game would be different in a particular area or in a particular way. But now I get to see the whole process and that's really cool for me. Um, and hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos. Someone did ask me about the lag. Uh, keep in mind that's lag that I'm experiencing with my computer. And uh, that was something that I was interested in too. So I did look around and found a few different videos um, on YouTube. And other people are not experiencing the exact same problems that I am. Uh, of course, there's a lot of shared things like the... Um, the textures, right, do seem to, like, there's not quite a strong contrast just yet. Uh, a couple of people, it looked like, found ways to um, just boost the saturation, and that really brought things out. I don't plan to do that myself. I'm just going to show you what the beta looks like as we kind of progress through, just to document things. And, you know, that's the way I like to do it, I guess. Um, one thing I kind of committed myself to when... Uh, when I started putting up videos for RuneScape, I, I sort of decided that I wasn't going to watch a whole lot of other people's content. Um, of course, you know, I'm willing, of course, to check out the occasional thing if somebody does something really cool. But I didn't want to be derivative. I didn't want to be influenced by other people um, that are doing stuff for the community as much. Um, of course, I've got tons of influences, you know, other things that I'm interested in. And uh, sometimes you guys send me really cool stuff that... Uh, that inspires a lot of ideas. And that's actually what I want to talk about today, if you guys are interested. Um, but it's going to mean that I have to think. So I kind of want to go and train a skill. Um, how about we go to the rune span? Yeah, let's do that. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, so here we are over in the rune span. And uh, the tip that I received today or a couple of days ago now, comes from uh, Z Dragon. He sent me a link to an image and three locations where the symbol that's in the image um, appears. I was able to go to and actually confirm two of them. And the first one I want to talk about is um, in Guthix's resting place. It's right on uh, the little platform that's right in front of him where he was kind of floating, standing, whatever. We can't really see the bottom. Um, and it was actually there before Sliske arrives, and because Guthix built this area in secret uh, late in the first stage, this symbol may have been there from that time, so it could have been there for thousands of years in-game. We also see the uh, language of the Naragi written kind of right nearby, and uh, that's kind of interesting, and I'll mention why in a bit. The next place that it shows up, and this one I wasn't able to confirm, I tried to go there and died a few times. Um, it didn't work out too great, just not my not my environment. Um, but it's right out front of Nex by his God Wars dungeon. And if someone can send a picture of that or whatever, that'd be great. I'd really appreciate it. Um, now, Nex means either death or murder in Latin, right? We also know that... Um, Next is a follower of Zamorak, the god of chaos. So that's pretty different from Guthix. The God Wars uh, dungeon would have first come about in, you know, the second or third age during the God, god Wars, the third age. Um, and by that time, Guthix was already asleep and wasn't really involved with the world. So that's pretty separate, right? So you've got Nex, who follows Zamorak, the god of chaos. Why would these two groups use the same symbol? That's interesting to me. The third place where this shows up is actually where we just left. It's right inside our port, um, and you can see it here on this little book uh, next to the Scrimshaw apparatus. And if we look closely on this book, 
um, there are a few hints that we might want to think about. The first one that caught my eye was another language. We've got the Tsar um, characters written on the book, and uh, you can see these in the Tsar library. They're written all over these uh, little orbs. And actually, as far as I know, that's the only place where we see their language is written on these orbs. So that is maybe important. I'm not sure. Um, obviously, player ports are mostly about the Eastern land. So when we see the Tsar language showing up on a book with a strange symbol and knowing that much of what we're gaining in player ports actually comes from the Eastern lands, we might find out that um, parts of the Tsar culture or or, you know, something more fundamental. We might find that in the Eastern Lands, and that could be interesting, too. Um, and there's a few things we know about the uh, Tsar. Some things we don't really know. I don't really know about their origins too well. I think they mentioned having some kind of a god that was made out of stone and rock and c is planning to come back one day. But we also know that the Tsar have trouble reproducing. Their um, offspring are not inheriting memories of their ancestors. Uh, and this comes up a lot. We see a lot of species uh, that are having trouble surviving, right? Just like the dragon riders dying out, um, you know, just like the Majorat, right? Um, in the dragon riders' case, it, we actually know now that it was Slisge who convinced them to come to Gilinor from another planet um, and the Majorat from another planet as well. It's interesting that the only way they kind of rejuvenate is by actually sacrificing one of their own. They perform this ritual of rejuvenation every 500 years, right? And this all ties together, but let's start with one thing. So this symbol that we see on the book, it's crossing between different groups, different cultures, different time periods, right? We've got the first age, potentially the third or second age, and then in the late fifth age, right? Now we're in the sixth age, as we know, but um, player ports came out in the fifth age, right? And... You know, these groups are not connected very well. You've got um, the god of balance, right? The god of chaos. And then you have the Tsar, who we don't really know um, much about them, right? Their, their language is there. So I think there's going to be a connection. But it might ev have even have come from the Eastern Lands, a place we don't know much at all about. So when you've got this symbol showing up again and again, to me, it suggests that it's either older than all of those groups or it's somehow universal likely to pop up again and again right there's something fundamental about it and if it's older than them um, then maybe it comes from even before guthics came to gilinor it could be from um, you know other worlds we don't know that's that could be really interesting too but we've got some more hints when we look in the player port room um, there are a couple pieces of rune essence on the desk. And there's also writing on the uh, the scrimshaw apparatus. I don't know if I mentioned that. But um, the rune essence is interesting. Because, as we know, um, rune essence gets its power from the stone of Jass. And Jass is one of the elder gods, right? So when we see the symbol, and we know it's probably going to be really, really old, one of the first places we might start to think of is actually the elder gods. And then you know, we've got a couple of pieces of rune essence right there. So the Stone of Jazz is so powerful that it leaks power into the rocks around it. That's why we have rune essence. There's really no good reason I can think of why rune essence would be restricted to just making runes, right? Um, and it's kind of interesting that it's actually capable of making runes in the first place. So all of the elder weapons, right? If we think about what they're used for, we've got the staff of Armadil, there's some horn, there's uh, the sword that is all broken in uh, the world wakes, you see it on a table kind of sparking. All of these weapons appear to be used to steal power from other things, other gods usually, right? And with the Stone of Jass, what we see is that it infused rock, which is then capable of stealing power from the elements, earth, water, fire, and also from other things like um, astral, right, law, chaos, nature, right, more general stuff, um, and then there's soul runes, and we don't know how soul runes are created yet, but 
if we ask ourselves what is the nature of the power that the gods have, I think the first answer that pops into my mind is that it's actually like the essence of the universe or something like that, you know, life elements and so on and so on and so on. It's the stuff, right? And when we think about the elder gods, if we ask ourselves, how did they get so powerful? My guess would be that maybe they actually destroyed their own universe, right? by collecting, by concentrating power, um, the Elder Gods may have actually destroyed their universe. And so it's the concentration of power into like single beings that allows them to ascend up the, the ladder into Godhood, right? So they're stealing power from each other. They're stealing power from the elements. And then when we see that there are creatures on all these planets that we've heard about so far who have had trouble reproducing, right? Maybe that's part of it. Maybe they're actually stealing the ability of these pl planets to survive. So if the Elder Gods did destroy their universe and then decided, hey, you know, we're the most powerful beings in the world, but we're also the only beings in the world now. And maybe, you know, um, destruction among them would be mutually assured, right? So they wouldn't fight each other. Or maybe they were so powerful they couldn't defeat each other, right? So it was like a stalemate. Um, maybe they made a pact to make a new universe with the intention of creating a world that was actually capable of surviving, sustaining itself. We know Gilinor is supposed to be this perfect world, this world. But we don't know why. We don't know why yet. We know the dragonkin are around, and uh, when someone uses the Stone of Jazz, the dragonkin become more powerful. So if that could be used as a as a balance right as a check on the concentration of power into other gods other beings right then that might make sense that that might be why they think it's a perfect world but what we're seeing now is that at least one group is having trouble carrying on their legacy right the tsar are dying or they're not really working out i mean they can't create their warriors and stuff like that i think that's really interesting and I think that when we think back about rune essence and say to ourselves, okay, well, you know, we've used this stuff for one thing, right? It, humans discovered it late in the fourth age. That's how humans came to dominate the world, right? But we know their power could be much more general. It could be used for way more things. Like the Stone of Jass is supposed to be used to create stuff. So I think what we're going to see is that maybe the new skill is going to be like a technological advance in the way people use rune essence. And I also think there's a good chance, I mean, all of the, uh, like the fire altar, wind, air, whatever, air altar, sorry, um, these rune crafting altars have been shriveling up. And this guy, Felix, uh, yeah, I think that's his name, um, had some thesis that maybe we weren't going to be able to keep making runes the way we had. Maybe we'll have to make them in the rune span here. And I think that's kind of interesting. You know, so the traditional way of making runes might not exist anymore. Maybe the reason is because we're actually stealing power from the planet, which is what the Fremenic actually believe. The group to the north, uh, kind of, um, I guess they're supposed to be a, a bit like a Scandinavian accent from the lore podcast, which is kind of interesting. But anyways, that's an aside. So I, th I think that what we're going to end up doing is having two new skills, and one is going to involve maybe the discovery of what sorts of different things you can actually do with rune essence, and then the secondary skill might be like actually doing those things, and I think we'll be creating items for the pocket slot. And I think the overbearing theme here will be something like the concentration of power, either fighting um, to gain power or to distribute it, right? And I think that's going to be really cool. So uh, that's pretty much all I've got for today. There's probably a few things I forgot. It's kind of a big topic, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed listening. If you guys have any thoughts, I'd, I wouldn't mind hearing about that for sure. And uh, it shouldn't be too many weeks before we actually find out if this is even close to true. It's pretty speculative, so, you know, it's, it's probably not true, but it's kind of interesting. 
So I'll see you guys later.